Guan Yu! I would like to offer my surrender. What? Oh. What are... Why? General, have you lost your mind? In the military, the orders of your superiors are not to be questioned. I will accept no protest. <sighs> what kind of person are you? Even when surrendering, discipline will be enforced. <sighs> What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Night Owl channel. Welcome back to the series where we're counting down the top Dynasty Warriors characters as of the latest game. Coming in at number 39, starting off the 30s, we've got Eugene. Eugene is a general who served South South since he first raised an army. He was an established general within the Wei Kingdom and was actually known as one of the five generals of Wei. He won success in numerous battles and was known as a majestic and resilient man, but he frightened allies due to his strict disciplinary behavior. However, during the Siege of Fawn Castle, he surrendered to Guan Yu and was a frail old man by the time he returned to Wei, long after Cao Cao's death. After he spots murals depicting his cowardice and, and Peng Du's valiant death, he dies as a man filled with regret. Eugene was made a playable character in Dynasty Warriors 8 Extreme Legends, so for me, this game in Dynasty Warriors 9, he's a newer character to me, so not really any changes for the character at all. But before we jump into all that, let's take a look at the popularity polls to see why Eugene's up here at number 39. In the first popularity poll, Eugene receives 495 votes out of a total of 75,000, putting him down at the 58th spot. In the second popularity poll, he jumps all the way up to the 22nd spot. And then in my personal rankings, he's gonna drop back down to the 39th spot. So since Eugene was introduced in Dynasty Warriors 8 Extreme Legends, and I didn't play Dynasty Warriors 8 Extreme Legends, he's a new character to me in Dynasty Warriors 9. So he's not gonna have any changes or anything like that, and I was just going off of kind of how he looked, and the limited time that I played Dynasty Warriors 9 before making the series was the only impression that I have of Eugene. I put him up pretty high because he looked pretty cool. I think the main two factors for me with Eugene was his look and his weapon style. I, didn't, I don't think I played with him back then, um, but going through his story now, I would say his ranking would probably stay relatively the same for me after going through his story in Dynasty Wars 9. Uh, he's not like super impressive or anything like that. He doesn't have any crazy accolades. I do know him from the cutscenes and seeing his roles in the battle, but nothing crazy where it would jump his number up for me in the next ranking or anything like that. So he stays pretty average for me and he seems like a pretty average character at least in general to me. For that being said, let's go ahead and start off with who Eugene is for people who don't know. Eugene is a man who strictly follows the law and emphasizes military discipline. He often uses threats of execution to motivate his subordinates and intimidate his enemies, making him feared by both. He shows no hesitation to punish anyone for anything he deems as an inconvenience to the army. So I guess with Eugene, we can just start wherever with him because nothing really changes. I'm gonna start with his significant battles and talk about the Battle of Fawn Castle. Uh, this is his most significant battle, at least within the series. Every other battle he doesn't, you know, he plays a role, he's there, and uh, he's one of the five generals of Wei, so he has a lot of success within these battles. But I believe Fawn Castle is the main significant battle that Eugene, um, unfortunately, is kind of known for, especially in Dynasty Wars 9 when they really highlight it. So the Battle of Fawn Castle is the battle between Guan Yu and, you know, Guan Yu and Liu Bei's forces, Shu versus Wei, basically. Cao Cao sends Cao Ren, Peng De and Eugene, Manchong, they all get sent to Fawn Castle to take it. They take the castle, Guan Yu floods it, takes it down, and that's where kind of everything goes bad for the Wei team. Uh, Eugene, up until that point, again, was a considered a five general of what one of the best among the Wei Kingdom. Unfortunately, he's going to take a hit with his reputation when he surrenders to Guan Yu. Apparently within the game, this was part of his strategy in his ending. He talks to Cao Cao and he's like, if he surrenders, he'll give us supplies, let us guard down. It'll, it'll sap resources from them and then we can attack them. I don't really know if that was something that was uh, actually planned or that's something that happened in history. I read through Eugene's historical information. That doesn't seem to be the case. Uh, it seems like he genuinely, you know, they were on the verge of losing. You know, he decides to surrender. Peng De decides to fight back, gets killed. We talked about it with Peng De. Sao Ren is stuck in the castle. Man Chong is stuck in the castle. Um, and they have to wait for like Shu Huang and the Wu reinforcements to come. His subordinates, his army was not very happy with his decision, which ended up hurting his reputation in the end because eventually Eugene got released back to the Wei Kingdom after a couple of years. 
When Salpi becomes the Emperor of Wei after Sao Sao's death, he goes to a mural where it basically transcribes the event that happened at the Battle of Fawn Castle. Pang De is shown as a valiant and courageous man that died in the line of duty. And then he sees that, you know, he's mentioned, but he's taken the cowardly way out and surrendering versus going out the, I guess, honorable way and stuff like that. In Dynasty Warriors 9, I believe they were a lot more uh, nice about it. In historical records, it just seems it wasn't as nice. And uh, Eugene ended up passing away because of that, because of the uh, humiliation, the regret, and, you know, all that grief that he had about his decision came back to, you know, haunt him and ended up being the main cause of his death. I personally don't think it's that big of a deal. I thought he made the right decision with the, you know, the knowledge that he had at the time. It was either, you know, surrender and, and you know, spare your men, you know, everyone lives or fight back and everybody dies, you know, what gets accomplished that way. I guess it didn't really matter in the end because when he came back, it was described that, like I said earlier, he came back as a frail old man, gray hair all over the place. He just looked, you know, very fragile and was just incapable of really being of any use as a warrior anymore. But I can't really fault him for his decision. I mean, I, I like I said, he made the best decision with the resources that he had. So it was quite tough to see that that was his main battle again up until that point. A lot of success in all the other battles. He was part of, you know, the Wake Kingdom and he's part of South South's forces for a long time. And uh, it's unfortunate to see how his story unfortunately came to an end. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the character himself. His appearance looks pretty good. Again, that's the main draw for me in the character and why he's average. He's only 39th for me, so that's like right in the middle of the list. It's not like too crazy up and it's not too crazy down. His appearance was enough to intrigue me to want to play him. I don't think I played him back then, but it was like, oh, he looks pretty cool. Or, oh, Eugene finally became a playable character. He looks pretty cool. I'm going to get around to play him eventually. And then going into his weapon style, I genuinely liked it. It's just like a fancy pike. You know, it's the war trident. Uh, it's a pretty good weapon. I don't have too much to complain about or too much to like crazily praise about. I really like the aerial Musao that he has with that. I thought that was pretty cool, but um, nothing, you know, too, too crazy where it was like, oh, that was sick. I want to play it again or it would make him higher on the list. Like I said, I think he would relatively remain the same if I did another ranking for the Dynasty Warriors characters, but I liked his appearance. Weapon style was cool. Aerial Musao was the best part of his move set. And uh, that's pretty much it. His voice acting's good too. I mean, voice acting is solid. In the military, the orders of your superiors are not to be questioned. I will accept no protest. It fits that strict disciplinarian type of person that he is. And, you know, I can't really complain too much about the way Eugene sounds. I think it's just fine for who he is as a character. And then finally, I guess we already talked about his death, but we'll, I guess I'll reiterate it a little bit. Let's talk about his relationships as well. The two main ones he has, it's going to be with Cao Cao and Pang De. So, of course, Cao Cao, because leader of his forces, he has to, you know, have a relationship with him to be part of his kingdom. And, um, you know, he has his ending with him. He has a lot of interactions with him. And uh, right before the Battle of Fawn Castle, they have a little uh, interaction. Just, you know, Cao Cao is like looking out for him, you know, hope your fear is not getting to you or something like that. Master Cao Cao, I shall be on my way. Yes, I only hope that your fears are unfounded. But they had that relationship, and apparently they had a conversation about Eugene's plan before it happened. Eugene was aware of how strong Guan Yu was. He didn't, I, I wouldn't say he was doubting the ability of the team that he had, you know, Sao Ren and Peng De and, you know, the strategy that they were going with. But I think he knew at some point that it would have gotten difficult. So he went to Sao Sao and it was like, like I said, he went to him, he talked to him, hey, you know, this could happen. If we surrender, it'll give us a chance to strike back or something like that. And that's why he surrendered for the most part or, or something. That's what it seems like his ending was trying to convey. But it seems like he was, I mean, they, they legitimately lost. They didn't have a chance. The flood attack destroyed the morale, destroyed uh, mostly everyone. Pung Dug gets killed. You're going to surrender. I mean, you're just going to be losing more people at that point. I think he genuinely surrendered. And I think the ending was kind of fabricated. I don't think it happened like that. It was kind of weird to see what he was doing too because, I don't know, it just seemed out of character for Eugene, like kneeling down and stuff like that. Not saying he's not like respectful to Sao Sao, but it seemed out of character for who Eugene is. And then his relationship with Pong Da, they had a mutual respect between each other just because of the, uh, the readiness to accept death. 
uh, Eugene admired that about Peng De, and Peng De admired Eugene kind of stepping in for Peng De during the event that the soldiers were like, we don't trust Peng De, why is he here, why is he getting promotion? He's already battling, he's already part of the elite forces, and he's only been in a couple battles. I talked about that more with Peng De. Eugene steps in, steps up for Peng De. They build a mutual respect for each other. I don't know what the feelings were when they decided their own decisions, when Peng De decided to attack Guan Yu, lose, and not surrender, he gets killed. And I don't know if he felt a certain way, or if he even knew if Eugene surrendered. I don't know. I don't know if Eugene knew about Peng De's death. I'm sure he did, but I don't know if Peng De knew about that before you know, he charged in and attacked Guan Yu. Um, that's pretty much all I have for Eugene. I don't have anything else for him. I think he looks cool. Weapon style is great. Uh, voice acting is good. Personality is fine. It's not crazy, like, cool like or anything like significant to me, but personality is fine. Um, his story was cool. Uh, I think it was kind of short, though, because most of the battles before that was just, like, filler battles. I mean, he was obviously part of them, but he didn't really play a big role or anything like that. Fawn Castle was mainly when he got involved and when it became more unique to him. But but that's all I already have for Eugene here. I'm surprised he did that well in the second poll. I didn't, you know, maybe he was really cool in Dynasty Wars 8 Extreme Legends. I'm not really sure. But for me, he's like an average character, not too crazy. And uh, looking forward to see what he looks like in the new game. But that's all I have for Eugene here. Number 38 is going to be coming out real soon. Hope you guys are enjoying the series so far. Let me know what you guys think of the character. If you guys use him. If you guys like Eugene or anything like that. Or if I miss anything, feel free to let me know down in the comment section. But that's all I have for Eugene here, guys. If you guys enjoyed it, definitely appreciate a like, comment, or subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hey, fool,